Hello, Monolithics is pleased to introduce you to the newly released Monolithics CLR library for the ANSYS HFSS environment. This is the first time that our microwave global models are available within a full 3D EM simulator, enabling seamless electromagnetic co-simulation and maximum design accuracy. Monolithics has partnered with ANSYS to bring microwave global models into the HFSS environment. The Monolithics CLR library for HFSS is available now. The CLR library is a collection of highly accurate simulation models, where each one represents an entire commercially available series of component values and a scalable in part value. They are also structured to be substrate scalable and provide for statistical tolerance analysis. Many models include horizontal vertical orientation effects and pad geometry scaling. Every model is thoroughly documented with a detailed data sheet. So why use these models? Monolithic models address the industry need for standardized RF simulation models that are highly scalable, allowing designers to specify simulation parameters according to their particular design. This library provides huge savings over in-house modeling and helps designers increase success while reducing the time and need for on-the-bench tuning. Why use these models with HFSS? When dealing with high frequency, high density, or multi-layer layout environments, layout has a huge impact on circuit performance. Monolithics models accurately capture real-world performance, while a 3D full-wave solver like HFSS accounts for complex layout interactions and environmental interactions as well. Combining these simulation tools in electromagnetic co-simulation will give the most accurate and realistic prediction of circuit performance. In the layout shown here, the purple rectangles are lumped ports. Think of these as a stand-in for where capacitors would be placed on the transmission line shown in yellow. Because of their proximity, coupling between the capacitor terminations can occur. In addition, this is a multi-layer substrate with a VR array grounding scheme, leading to even more complex interactions between the layout and the component itself. EMCO simulation is a solution for capturing these interactions. To demonstrate the benefits just mentioned, here are a few examples that we will cover to demonstrate the flexibility and accuracy of this model ethics plus HFSS design approach. Our first example is an 800 MHz bandpass filter designed and built by Monolithics. On the left hand side, you can see the filter schematic as seen in HFSS. The simulation uses microwave global models for all components and the ANSYS HFSS built in transmission line models. On the right hand side, notice the excellent simulation to measurement agreement achieved. The red traces represent simulation data and the blue circles represent measurement data taken. For more examples of filters and other circuit designs, see our application notes under the literature section on the Model Ethics website. In this example, the effect of capacitor orientation is shown. Notice that the horizontal orientation shown in red has an additional higher order resonance when compared to the vertical orientation shown in blue. Capturing this characteristic may be important to design optimization. Model ethics models are validated on multiple substrates and pad geometries for maximum flexibility to suit designers' needs. This is a key advantage over S-parameter files that are only good for certain substrate and certain pads. Since they are equivalent circuit models, they can be extrapolated in frequency with accurate results within reason. Here you can see the change in a capacitor simulated performance when different substrate properties are passed into the model. In this last example, we show an EM co-simulation using ANSYS HFSS. Using monolithics models in the schematic will account for important device parasitics, but what about interactions with complex layouts, multi-layer boards, complex grounding seams, and coupling, which can all lead to variation in circuit performance? Shown here is the layout view of a filter drawn in the electronics desktop environment. The pads and part outline of the models are included in the layout. The layout was then sent to the HFSS EM analysis tool, and lump ports were defined at the reference planes where the models will be connected later in the co-simulation. Here is a high-pass filter design available as one of the examples under the CLR release for ANSYS. You can see that this design is using model fix models, and it's very easy to use these components just as you would any other component. Simply go to the component library, scroll down to the model fix section, and drag and drop the models as you would usually. Once the schematic is created, a layout can be created, and this can be turned into a 3D EM co-simulation. This layout structure will be simulated separately and then brought back into the schematic. Here, model ethics models will be connected across the ports, and then the combined results of the co-simulation can be seen. Previously, EM simulation involved exporting to a different environment and then important S-parameter data back into the circuit for co-simulation. 
Now all of these steps have been integrated into a single environment with ANSYS HFSS EM analysis tool. Why are the simulation results with and without EM different? The inclusion of ideal transmission line models without EM analysis in the simulation will take into account the parasitic inductance and capacitance of the lines connecting components in the layout, but they are completely self-contained and cannot account for the interactions between lines. 3D electromagnetic field solvers such as HFSS solve Maxwell's equations in all three dimensions. This solves for all fields present in any arbitrary structure and captures the effects of all interactions between circuit elements such as coupling or radiation. Note the improvement with co-simulation even for a fairly simple design. Thank you for watching. Please contact Modelithics at support at for more information about the CLR library for HFSS.